Good evening, my name is Brian Grimkowski. I'm one of the assistant directors of graduate admissions here at William Patterson University. I'm joined by my colleague, Christina Aiello, also one of our assistant directors here in the office. And she's gonna be walking you through our presentation in just a couple minutes. Obviously, the point of this for us is to give you a, a relatively quick and easy way to get a lot of information. Uh, we know for many of you, you're coming in as a first time graduate student at William Patterson. Um, we know there are a number of things that you might have to go through and accomplish um, from getting a new student ID, um, from learning where some of the different buildings and places are on campus, um, and just acclimating yourself uh, to getting parking decals and things like that you, that you may not have had to done ever or, or not in quite some time. So we wanna make sure you're very comfortable um, and have all the information that you need to be able to, to do these things. The other thing I wanna make sure I let everybody know right from the get-go is we are gonna be recording this presentation. So if uh, for one reason or another you have to leave early, you can only catch part of the presentation um, for anybody further down the line that joins us a little bit late um, you are going to be able to refer back to this uh, usually uh, within a week so by next week you'll be getting an email from our office that includes a direct link to this presentation on our YouTube channel so again we know um, there are family obligations uh, there are work obligations so certainly uh, if you do have to duck out early uh, you're not going to miss any important information we'll make sure that we get that to you as soon as possible um, so lastly uh, as we go through um, we, we just wanted to make sure uh, that you knew as well. You can, at any point in this presentation, type a question into the chat box uh, on the GoToWebinar screen. Um, if we're able to, and it's not something that's gonna be covered uh, during the course of the presentation, uh, we'll make sure that we type a quick answer for you, uh, and certainly we will stick around for a couple minutes at the end of the presentation should you have any questions. We know many times there are very um, case-specific uh, circumstances that can pop up, and we wanna make sure we get you all the information you need and answer any questions that you might have. Um, so I, I believe that's it on my end. Uh, I know you're here for the presentation and we want to get you back uh, to your regular daily scheduled life. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Christina. So uh, take it away. Good evening, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. I want to first congratulate you on your acceptance for graduate school at William Patterson University. Um, just one other thing is next week on the 19th, we'll be hosting a registration webinar, same time, 5.30 to 6.30. So in the event you've not yet registered and you had some questions or you wanted to go over some of the things that may be confusing to you, you are more than welcome to go ahead and sign in for that. <clears throat> as well and that will be the same as this if you sign up for it and for some reason you're unable to make it it will be recorded and we will be able to send you the link to the presentation so without further ado i'm going to start going through our presentation here um, first is the location. I'm hoping that at some point you've all been able to come to campus. Um, we are located in Wayne. <clears throat> and here's a picture of pretty much, it's an overview. Um, if you look towards the left, that's going to be the main parking lot. You can kind of make out the solar panels there. Um, so for the most part, that's where you're, you're going to head when you come to campus. Um, for those of you who are MBA candidates um, and College of Ed, master's degree candidates, you guys are going to head over to our Valley Road campus and the address for that is 1600 Valley Road. There is a shuttle, <clears throat> excuse me, from Valley Road to main campus and back in the event you need to do things at one of the other campuses. Just a little bit of an outline for today, we are going to talk about WP Connect, how to sign in obtaining your student ID cards, your parking decal. We're going to go through your email address, the emergency notification system um, on campus, Blackboard for those of you that are taking um, online courses, and even just to check syllabi and things like that, we'll go through. Um, any type of forms and graduate exams, your payment options, and we've put together a few FAQs. Uh, hopefully that'll answer the majority of your questions. But as Brian said earlier, if you have further ones, you're more than welcome to type them into the box as we go along. <clears throat> First up with WP Connect. WP Connect is our web portal for the university. You're going to log into it um, and access your student email, your Blackboard account. You're going to view and pay your bills. Be advised that there are no paper bills at this point with the university. You can view your academic transcripts and access access a plethora of information from the university. Um, your user ID is going to be your last name and your first initial. It's the beginning portion of your email address. Now keep in mind some of you have a number 
after your initial your first initial you will want to include that as your login um, ID your password at this point is going to be your student ID number which begins with 855 you will want to take that number and memorize it make sure you keep it close with you because you will use your student ID number for virtually everything on campus um, your login information and password was provided to you in your welcome packet that had been sent to you after you'd been accepted for the degree, um, and that would include those who are non-degree seeking students as well. In order to access WP Connect, I've added the link right here. It's wpconnect.wpunj.edu, but be advised you can also get to it from our um, homepage. It's on the top left corner. Obtaining a student ID card. A student ID card is it's extremely important for you to have with you uh, with the university. It enables you to make copies on campus, to get into buildings, to have access to things. Um, so you're going to want to obtain one of those through the hospitality office, the ID center, which is located in University Commons, the student center, room 100. Um, it is on the main floor of University Commons. Those hours of operation are Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 4.30. <clears throat> However, they do have additional evening hours at the beginning of the semester, um, right before the semester begins to make sure that they can accommodate everybody. Do keep in mind that you will want to check their schedule in the event you're looking to get your ID card in the next couple weeks. The university is currently on summer hours, which is Monday through Thursday from 8 to 5.15 p.m. So I don't want you coming up here on a Friday and you know having them be closed. Um, ID cards are issued to every student that is enrolled for classes. That's extremely important. You must be registered and enrolled at the university before they will provide you with an ID card. There is no charge for your ID card and replacement cards after the first results in a $10 fee. <clears throat> um, again, you need to bring two forms of identification and you must be currently enrolled for classes in order to obtain the ID card. Um, you are welcome also to put some funds on your ID card for the different um, restaurants and things on campus. If you'd like to look into that, those are called Pioneer Express funds. And again, if you go to our website, I believe under WP Connect, it'll give you an outline of the different places on and off campus that you're able to use that card. Obtaining a parking decal. This is probably the second most important thing you're going to need before you uh, start classes in September. Um, your vehicle registration form must be filled out online. So again, you're going to log into WP Connect. And it shows here if you are a student, um, it's the, our website, WP Connect, username, password, it's under self-service, miscellaneous, and then the parking lot permit request form. For those of you who are graduate assistants, you are going to log in a little bit differently and you're going to click the employee application and then employee services in order to get to the place where you need to get to fill out that form. They will mail you your parking decal, so you want to make sure that you fill that out as quickly as possible so that you do have it before the beginning of the semester. Your WPU email account. This is the official form of communication for the university. You will be required to use the email account to communicate with all university offices and faculty. If you have a question with the registrar's office, you will be required to use your WPU email address. There are professors that will not respond to email unless it comes from your university address. You want to make sure that you log in consistently. Um, be advised that your um, tuition, uh, payments, and payment schedules, your billing, everything will go to that email address. So you do want to make sure that you're constantly in there. Um, for those of you at this point who have registered for classes, you want to make sure you go ahead and check your bills so that you don't get, you know, dropped out of your courses um, for them not being paid. The login information um, here is pretty much your gateway to registration. Again, paying your bills, grades, and all of the university services, the essential services. So you'll go to our website, WP Connect. You'll enter your username as it appears in your email address, which was provided again in your welcome letter. <clears throat> There is an example there. Um, your password is your 855 number. You're going to log in and then click the email tab to access your student email. In the event for some reason you're having difficulty logging in, you are welcome to reach out to the help desk for any type of technical support if you're getting error messages, and they can be reached at 973-720-4357. Emergency notification, Connect 5. 
This is our outsourced uh, notification system. You must opt in in order to receive these types of notification. Again, you're going to do WP Connect, Emergency Notification Setup, and you can choose how you'd like to receive these notifications, whether it's a voicemail, a text message, Facebook, Twitter. Email will automatically be sent to your, e uh, your university email address, so if you are going to enter something else, you would want to make it a personal address. Text alerts will begin with WP Alert so that you know it is coming from the university. Um, this will notify you if there are any school closings, if there are any delayed openings, if there's anything going on on campus that you need to be aware of, whether it's a closed parking lot or traffic and things like that. So it is absolutely beneficial to you. Um, and I can tell you that, you know, I, I have it set up and I rarely get the messages unless there is something serious going on on campus. So it is something that you want to consider. Um, other means of notification in the event of closings and things like that, obviously our homepage. There is an emergency number that you can dial, which is 973-720-2475. Uh, you can always call the main number, which is 973-720-2000. And listed below are the radio stations and television stations where you can find information about the university. In case of emergency, campus safety, these are some of the features that we have on campus when it comes to protecting our students. Um, again, the phone number for the university police in the event you should, uh, you, you should need it. We suggest that you program your cell phone with an indication of ICE, and it should be visible to any emergency personnel. I know on iPhones there's a way to do it, um, which shows here, and Android as well in the event, God forbid, there's something wrong. Um, there are emergency phones located throughout the campus and will provide automatic connection to the police dispatch. Safety cameras are installed in buildings and all on the outdoors. Uh, 911 calls made from a university phone will be routed directly to the university police, and those made from a cell phone will go to the public safety access point and then will be relayed to the university police. Um, all of our buildings exceed fire safety requirements, have heat and smoke monitors, and there is a zero tolerance for fire safety violations. Just some you know, background information so that this way you know that you are here protected. Blackboard. Blackboard is the online portal for a lot of the, um, or for all of the online classes uh, on, at the university. This can be accessed, again, through WP Connect or by going directly to bb.wpunj.edu. Your login and password is the same as your WP Connect. <clears throat> and if you've never used Blackboard and you either are currently registered or um, thinking of registering for an online course, we suggest that you take the time to get acquainted with the system. Uh, it can be a little tricky for some people. It's pretty self-explanatory, but there are different links, and it will show the courses there for you. You'll be able to print your syllabi. You can upload files uh, directly to your professors from there, so it's something that you definitely want to familiarize yourself with. Um, there is a quick guide for students. Again, it's at this link, <clears throat> so you're more than welcome to go ahead and take a look at that as well if you have any questions. Forms for current graduate students. So in the event you need to change your program concentration for some reason, um, you want to go ahead and download that PDF file and make sure that you complete it and provide it to the program director in which you are moving, the program in which you're moving to, um, the concentration I should say. Leave of absence, the form is online. This will include um, if you need to defer your acceptance, there is a deferral link and there is a leave of absence form. Now, let me go through the leave of absence form. You're eligible to take a leave of one semester. You can take an additional semester. It, it's allowed to be um, requested. However, you can only take up to one full year of a leave before you will be required to reapply to the university. Um, there you see the instructions. It's WP Connect, self-service, registration, and then select the leave of absence request form. Um, students not enrolled in courses or on a leave of absence will need to reapply through our office. So in the event something transpires, you want to make sure you go ahead and fill out that form. That form will ultimately put a hold and allow you to register for the next available term that you've chosen without having to go through any of the paperwork. Um, a student who doesn't wish to enroll in courses during any semester or you wish to withdraw uh, from register courses and drop down to zero credits must complete the leave of absence form or withdraw from the university completely in the event that should happen. Um, the action will automatically withdraw the courses for the chosen semester. 
However, it does need to be completed. Uh, transfer of credits form. For those of you who may have taken a graduate course outside of William Patterson University and are looking to transfer those credits in, you want to make sure that uh, you come to our office and pick up that paperwork. Be advised you can transfer in up to six graduate courses, which is usually uh, credits, I'm sorry, six graduate credits, which is the equivalent of two graduate courses usually. Um, application for matriculation. For those of you who are currently non-degree seeking students, we do encourage you to apply for full matriculation into a graduate certificate endorsement program. Um, you are able to complete up to nine graduate uh, credits, which is usually three graduate courses. Um, however, for those of you who are non-degree seeking students that are looking to take undergraduate courses, be advised you are able to register for up to 30 or undergraduate credits. Uh, the application may be obtained through our Apply Now section of graduate admissions, or you can come to our website. And again, you're more than welcome to pop into our office if necessary. Graduation and comprehensive exams. Your application for graduation uh, is right there. Again, it's Web Apps WPU. You'll be able to find it on WP Connect. Uh, keep in mind that there are certain dates. So for a January graduation, you're going to need to apply the September prior. For May, it'll be December 1st. And for an August graduation, it is June 1st. You want to make sure you um, abide by those guidelines uh, in a sense to make sure that the registrar has time to put together your paperwork and that your information is in the graduation booklets and things like that. Students who've completed an approved program may apply for a teaching certificate through the College of Ed Office of Certification. And again, these are the following deadlines for them. Um, fall semester is October 1st, spring April 1st, and summer is August 1st. For those of you who may need to complete a comprehensive exam, um, you want to go ahead and click that PDF link so that you can download the paperwork there and make sure that it's um, that you've consulted with the academic department, with your program director, and or the chair people of the department to make sure that everything is completed for you. Um, October 1st would be the deadline for the fall exam, and March 1st would be the deadline for the spring exam. On to payment options. Um, there's a bunch of different options for you to make payment for the tuition. You are more than welcome to pay in cash in person at Student Enrollment Services, which is located in Morrison Hall, um, the first floor. We are also located in Morrison Hall in the event you have any questions in room 100. You're welcome to use a check or money order, and that can either be mailed or, again, it can be brought to the Student Enrollment Services office. You want to make sure that on everything, including the check, that you include your banner ID number so that we make sure that we are accrediting the correct account. An e-check. You can pay your bill online uh, through our website, www.wpunj.edu backslash ebill. E-checks can only be used from personal checking and savings account. They are not uh, able to to accept commercial or home equity loans accounts. Um, there is no fee to, to pay by an e-check, so that's something you want to absolutely you know, consider as well. Internet credit cards, you're welcome to pay your bill with a credit card, MasterCard, Visa, American Express, or Discover. Again, you're going to go to the same e-bill website. You want to make sure, though, that you do understand there is a 2.75 convenience fee being charged in order to use a credit card. And last but not least, the tuition installment plan that tip plan. The university offers an interest-free installment plan starting for the fall and the spring and the summer terms. Enrollment is really quick. You can take care of it at Student Enrollment Services. Um, and if it's something that you want to consider, instead of having to pay your bill all at once, you can ultimately break it up throughout the semester. So you may want to go ahead and look at the payment plan page um, through the Student Enrollment Services. Tuition. These tuition rates are for the fall 16, spring 17 term, as the fall 17 rates have not yet been released. Um, they will increase a little bit. I believe last year the increase was about $40 per credit, so it wasn't, um, wasn't a lot of money. Uh, but again, you want to make sure that you do take a look at um, whether you are in-state or out-of-state. Um, there are programs like communication disorders, clinical and counseling psychology, the DNP, and the doctor of psychology that do have different tuition rates. So when you go to our tuition page, our graduate page, that will provide you with the information uh, that I believe should be updated within the next week or so to reflect the new 
fees, you want to make sure you're clicking on the correct link for your program. And here we are to some of our frequently asked questions. Um, how long do I have to finish my graduate program? A graduate program needs to be completed in six years from the time of matriculation into the program. So uh, you want to make sure that you are on schedule if you are coming part-time and only taking one or two courses a semester. Can you transfer credits from another university? I briefly went through that earlier. You may transfer up to a maximum of six graduate credits. Uh, again, they must meet the conditions specified in the graduate catalog, and you want to definitely talk to the program director about that because they would be the ones to sign off on that paperwork. How many credits uh, denotes a full-time student? Nine credits is considered a full-time for a graduate student. Um, it's eight or nine for biology students, the way the credits lay. Um, and all graduate assistants, for any of you out there who are graduate assistants, you must be full-time students in order to qualify. Is there financial assistance available for graduate students? We do offer the graduate assistantship, um, which is a tuition waiver and a stipend in exchange for 20 hours of work. Um, those applications are now being taken through the provost office, and the application deadline date, I believe, was March 1st for the fall 2017 term. Where can I find course offerings and schedules? Um, you're going to go to the main university page, which is wpunj.edu. You're going to click on students, and you're going to select class schedules. That'll bring you to a dropdown. You're going to select the semester, um, and then you can scroll through based on the course you're looking to take. How do you register for your courses? Again, you're going to go to our website, wpunj.edu. You're going to click into WP Connect, enter your username and your password, and then self-service. Um, under the registration, you'll see an add drop classes. You're going to select the term that's correct for you. In this case, it would be the fall term. Enter your PIN, which is your um, six-digit date of birth, so month, month, day, day, year, year. Um, and then you can go ahead and add and drop the classes. You do want to keep in mind when you are searching for classes that you uh, jot down possibly the CRN number because that is the number you'll need in order to actually register for the course. Um, where can you purchase textbooks? Textbooks can be pers uh, purchased in person or through the bookstore's website. Uh, in person, they are located in University Commons on the lower level, or you can go to that uh, website to go ahead and, and look for the books for your courses. That pretty much wraps up the information, general information for the orientation here. Um, I have provided our um, contact information, our phone, our email address, our website for any other questions that you may have. As Brian said earlier, this recording will be available to you um, on our YouTube channel, so you're more than welcome to go back and kind of flip through the slideshow in the event you, know, you missed something, I went through it too quickly. And other than that, we wish you a very successful semester. Thank you very much, Christina. I'm just going to touch upon a couple other things real quick. And in the meantime, if anybody has any questions um, that weren't addressed by the presentation or perhaps you joined us a little bit late and missed some of the earlier slides, feel free to type uh, the questions in the chat box and Christina and I will answer them as soon as we can. Um, just wanted to go over just a couple other things real quick. As Christina mentioned, this recording is going to be available in its entirety on our YouTube channel next week. Um, for having received the invitation to attend, you will also receive uh, an email follow-up with the direct link uh, to this recording. So keep that in mind if you did join us a little bit late. Uh, also, as Christina mentioned earlier, just want to reiterate not only our office, um, but also the Office of Student Enrollment Services, Financial Aid, Undergraduate Admissions, the Registrar, um, several offices that could be of interest to you are located in Morrison Hall. And we are operating under summer hours, so we're open right now Monday through Thursday from 8 o'clock to 5.15. So if you do need to stop in for any reason, either our office or one of the others in this building, just remember Morrison Hall is a building that you're going to be looking for. Um, also, if you happen to join us a bit late, I just wanted to reiterate again, as Christina said, we are going to be having uh, our next registration webinar uh, same day of the week, Wednesday, uh, July 19th, same time from 5.30 to 6.30. If you were accepted quite recently, you may not have received uh, the invitation just yet, um, but you will shortly, and some of you may have received it already. So if you've not yet registered for your courses and you want to get some questions answered about how to do so or kind of walk through the process first before you register for your classes, I would suggest that if it works with your schedule, you consider attending that as well. 
And lastly, uh, as was mentioned also, um, if you do have any very specific uh, questions about which course should I take um, or about your program or the requirements or anything along those lines, I can't stress enough that your respective program director for those of you that are matriculated in a program um, are a great point of resource, uh, re are a great resource for you. And if you haven't been in communication with them, uh, and if you go on the graduate uh, admissions page, the link that you see there, um, under program, uh, you can click on any individual program. The, the program director's contact information, email, phone, etc. are there and would certainly encourage you to get in touch with them with any uh, specific questions you might have. So with that being said, that concludes the formal part of our presentation. We will stick around for a couple minutes and we'll be answering your questions, but can't thank you enough on behalf of the Graduate Admissions Office for joining us uh, this evening for our webinar. We certainly hope that this information was helpful for you and uh, we certainly hope you enjoy the rest of the summer and we're looking forward to seeing you on campus again for the fall. Take care.